Hello everybody, my name is Jim, and this is my reading wrap-up for March 2024. Go ahead and skip ahead to the first book if you want to, because I gotta talk about what happened this month. I have not been uploading, um, because stress has reached a point where I just cannot handle anything else. It's not so much, I mean, I am busy, that's the reason why I'm stressed, but I cannot just attribute me not uploading to me being busy because I've uploaded while I was busy before and it was no problem. But stress this month has gotten to a point where physically and emotionally I cannot take on anything else. I'm still coming down from that. Um, in fact, I don't think it's going to go away anytime soon. I think that April is going to be pretty bad as well. I hate it. I want it to stop. Uh, I hope that there's a really warm, bright light at the end of the tunnel. Right now, I can't see it, and it sucks. So hopefully I can get through the five books that I read in March without sounding like I'm completely pissed off at the world. <laughs> um, luckily, this month was a great reading month. None of the books that I read this month were bad. I would recommend all five if you were interested in picking any of them up. But as always, of course, I have to start with the lowest rated of the good books that I read this month. And unfortunately, the lowest rated is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I did not expect this, that it would be a three-star book, but I did end up giving it three stars. It ended up being okay. I mean, it was it was an upper three. It was almost a four. But this is the story of Patroclus, who commits a crime, a violent crime, and is exiled to the city of Bethea. I don't know how to pronounce the, the cities, and I probably should have done research beforehand. But anyway, he's exiled. That's where he meets Achilles, and they start to form a friendship uh, between princes. They bond they sneak around, <laughs> and of course there is an upcoming war, and you know there are some decisions there that Patroclus has to battle within himself about whether or not he should stay with Achilles, whether or not some of the decisions Achilles makes are really the right decisions. Those parts of this story, I, I really enjoyed the relationship. I say this every time that I'm not a romance reader, but I did appreciate the romance in this story, and I appreciated the fact that Madeline Miller respected Patroclus and Achilles as romantic partners because I feel like Hollywood and other forms of media tend to take that away, strip that away to make things a bit more palatable for, I guess, straight people. <laughs> I don't know. So I'm glad that she respected that. I'm glad, I'm glad that she respected the time period. I just had a hard time on their own relating to Patroclus and Achilles. There there were some gaps in their personality that I was not connecting with. There were also some gaps in their relationship that I wasn't connecting with either. Of course, there were the romantic scenes, but outside of that, in their day-to-day, -day, I didn't really get that connection between them. Patroclus kind of fell flat as a main character, and Achilles as a love interest. He had some of his moments where he was snarky and cunning or whatever, but he sometimes lacked a personality as well. So I wish she would have pushed that a little bit more. Her writing is absolutely beautiful. This story is beautiful and solemn, but it kind of stayed that way the whole time. I didn't get very many ups and downs in the story until the very end, where the pacing picked up. Very close to a four-star read, but ended up being three for me. I would absolutely recommend this book to anybody, though, because pretty much everybody on Goodreads and BookTube have given this book five stars. So, yeah. The next book on the list is Straight by Chuck Tingle. This is a four-star read. This was a bit unexpected. So, I picked up this book because I know that there is an upcoming horror book, I think, from Chuck Tingle called Bury Your Gaze. I wanted to familiarize myself with his horrors, but 
if you don't know, Chuck Tingle is a tongue-in-cheek author who wrote books like Pounded in the Butt by My Own Butt. <laughs> he is a funny guy. He, he writes humorous erotica that I've never read. Um, so I, I didn't really know, based on the titles of his other books, exactly what I was going to get into with Straight. But I enjoyed it. The tension was high. I wish it was extended a little bit more. Um, so the premise of this book, I, I need to stop talking about my opinions before I talk about the premise. This is the story of Isaac. This is from his perspective. So there's one day a year called Saturation Day where all of the straight people in the world become these violent, homophobic, zombie-like people where they can be hit and hurt and all this stuff can happen to them but they just pop right back up and are just fueled by their rage for the LGBTQ. So Isaac and his group of friends opt to hide out in the desert to get away and hopefully hold out until the day is done. And right from the beginning you kind of get an idea as the straight people around Isaac are starting to shift, transform their personalities uh, for Saturation Day, you immediately get a feeling of urgency that not everybody can be trusted. There may be some dangers hiding in innocent places. So the stakes are presented to you right away. There are also some conspiracies that are brought up by Isaac's friends that I wish were written about a little bit more. I wish there was a little bit more consideration about those because I kind of liked those conspiracies. This whole story felt metaphorical to me. And I mean, of course it was. It had to have been. Because there were so many things that pointed to deep-seated homophobia that people have that and maybe provoked by the wrong people who are super homophobic and empower those individuals to come out with their hate and their vitriol towards a group of people. In fact, it even brushes on deep-seated homophobia within the queer community itself. I enjoyed pulling some of that out of the story. I do wish it was longer because Saturation Day is only one day a year. I feel like there are some things that happened that maybe could have been extended um, to explain a little bit more. I don't want to go into details, but this was a great short story. I'm looking forward to Bury Your Gaze. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get an arc on NetGalley, which stinks, but whatever, I'm going to end up reading it anyway because I did enjoy this story very much. So, moving on to the next book that I read, The House of Hidden Meetings by RuPaul. I had to slow down because I've tried to say that title like five times really quickly and I keep saying hidden meetings which I don't want to think about on a Saturday. So <laughs> this is RuPaul's memoir of basically his journey to stardom. Um, if you're looking for a memoir that includes anything about RuPaul's drag race, this is not it. This doesn't mention drag race at all. This is about RuPaul's childhood growing up. There were instances in here where he just kind of had to pave his own path to move forward. In fact, all of it was because he was pretty nomadic. He moved from place to place. He was flying everywhere. He would hitch rides with his friends. It was very interesting to see his rise to stardom and kind of understand the gay culture in um, oh gosh, where was he in California? San Diego, I think, and then Atlanta and New York. Um, like I said, he traveled everywhere. I think he ended up in Texas at one point <laughs> by accident. Uh, so yeah, this was a, a pretty rocky rise to stardom, but his persistence and resilience and finding opportunities wherever he could was so interesting to read. And of course, he introduced us to Lady Bunny. I don't know what the relationship is now, because obviously this was many, many years ago, but I was looking for her <laughs> when I was reading this memoir. I will say some of the things that I didn't 
really like so much. I'm, I'm not that big on sex talk, and there was a lot of that. But in general, I did enjoy his memoir. I am so happy that he was able to work hard to pave a path for himself. Um, so I did end up giving this four stars. Next on the list is Wandering Stars by Tommy Orange. This is both a prequel and a sequel to There There. I had an arc for this. NetGalley gave me an arc, which I appreciate so much because I was so excited for this book. This was one that I wanted to read this year after reading There There in December. I loved this book. It it In my review, I said that it provided the pieces of bread around There There's meat or middle. It follows one family line from the Sandy Creek Massacre over 100 years ago to present day after the events that took place in There There. A lot of the problems that I had with There There were around the amount of characters that were introduced to us and the way that they were introduced. It was really hard to remember each of their stories, but I think that Wandering Stars was able to refine that. You do see some familiar faces and you read about them, Uh, which I appreciated because I was able to pull from their experiences from There There into this one. I would recommend that you read There There first. I saw a lot of reviews that were kind of confused about the time skip between the past and the present, and I know that they would have benefited so much more had they read There There first. I don't know why this isn't being treated as a duology. I think it should be. So if you haven't read There There, I would absolutely recommend that you read that before you read this so that you understand what happens in between and you get a better understanding of the story because they don't really elaborate so much on the events of There There. They do brush on them. They say, you know, these are the after effects of it, whatever, but they don't go into full detail about exactly what happened at the end of There There. Another thing that this book talks about is history and how so often Native Americans are delegated, I guess. Is that the word? Maybe? I don't know. To history. On one hand, it was so important for these characters to learn more about their past, their heritage, their culture, learn more about themselves and their lineage, where they came from. But at the same time, it's so important for us to understand the modern Native American that for whatever reason we are blind to, this sort of discussion is exactly why this book needed to be written. I love the cast. I still think Tommy Orange has beautiful prose. I will certainly pick up another book of his. I gave this five stars. And finally, the best book, well, I gave this perfect fives across the board, and you may notice that, but I'm not saying that this is better than Wandering Stars necessarily or The Color Purple because Wandering Stars and The Color Purple were were able to do some things exceptionally well. So just letting you know now that my star rating is a lie, but as far as raw rating is concerned, (laughs) Foster by Claire Keegan got a perfect five from me. This is the story of a little girl who is dropped off to a family that she is unfamiliar with by her father because her mother is currently preparing to have a baby. She's pregnant. So she is being fostered in the summertime by this couple, Edna and John Kinsella. Yeah, Kinsella. They invite her to participate in their daily tasks. John sends her off to fetch the mail every day. They turn it into like a little game where he times her speed. Edna, I can't remember if they sew, if she sews. Um, But there's a hobby that Edna does that she pulls the little girl in uh, to participate. They take her to the store. They spoil her, basically. They treat her so well. Um, They teach her so many new things and they just love on her. This is a very sweet book. There were some things that this little girl said through her perspective when her dad dropped her off at that point i had no idea where this story was going this is part of my adoptee challenge because i am an adoptee so of course i was invested this is not exactly what i expected going in but i still think that it hit some 
parts of me that I haven't felt in a long time. It was really difficult not to empathize with this little girl, not to understand how odd it was. I don't know necessarily if it was difficult. Well, I'm sure it was, it, it was, it was difficult. How difficult it was to adjust to this new atmosphere that she's not familiar with because these are strangers to her. On the other side, with the Kinsolas, it was easy to see how different it was for them as well, where they have to adjust to having this child in their house. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how to talk about this. It was a sweet book. But there were unknowns, I guess I could say, that added tension to this story. There were things that were unspoken. There were things that left you wondering a little bit. And that made me kind of uneasy, despite the love and the sweetness that this story put forward. Yeah, I think that's how I'm going to describe this. <laughs> you have to read it for yourself. It's a short one. If you haven't read Foster yet, I would absolutely recommend that you do it. It's a short one, so even if you don't like it, who cares? You, you what, wasted an hour of your life? Okay. Um, daylight savings time is a thing. You'll get one back. So, yeah, I, I don't know what else to really say about this because I feel like I would spoil it if I spoke any further. But I did empathize with the little girl. I, I empathized with her perspective, her bravery in this situation because, I mean, gee... Even though her dad trusts these people, she's never met them before. So she really didn't know what she was getting into with the Kinsla's. But yeah, I thought this was a, a great short story. I think it was the perfect length with the perfect amount of tension to where it earned its five-star rating. If you are interested in any of the books that I talked about today, their Goodreads links are in the description below. Click on those. Head on over to the retailer of your choice and purchase them if you're feeling brave or check them out from your library or your library app if they are available. If you enjoyed this video for whatever reason, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Otherwise, I've been Jim. You've been great. Happy reading.